we shall continue our conversation this morning. We started speaking last two weeks, two weeks ago, right? About a chosen generation. How that you are what? You are a chosen generation. I'm beyond the from first letter chapter, chapter one from verse twenty three to twenty five. That says the Paul Luther 1, 23, 25 says that being born again not of corruptible seed but of incorruptible by the word of God which they get and abide forever. 24 For all flesh are grass and not the glory of man and the flower of grass. The grass withereth and the flower they are fallen away. Uh-huh. But the word of the Lord enjoy forever. And this is the word we have by the gospel is preached unto you. So we look at the fact that you are born of God, right? You are born again, right? Of an incorruptible seed. And that because of this, you have been delivered from a low life, a casual life, a life that is in pursuit of corruptible things, of earthly things. Amen. That you are born of an incorruptible state. Praise the Lord forevermore. Then we move to chapter 2. Uh, give me this in NLT now. It says, So get rid of all evil behavior. Be done with all deceit, hypocrisy, jealousy, and all unkind speech. So we found out that because you are not born again, you can get rid of all evil behavior, right? Is that true? What's true? Okay, I thought you were just whining me. Uh, you know that? Father <laughs> says, is that true? You get, and the guy has left off. He's like, he didn't get anything. So we can get rid of what? All evil behavior, because we are children of God. We have this life. Verse 2 says what? Like newborn babies, you must crave pure spiritual milk so that you will grow into a full experience of salvation. Cry out for this nourishment, verse 3, now that you have had the taste of the Lord's kindness. Clearly it says, if so be that ye have tasted the Lord is gracious. So we found out that Spiritual hunger, are you understanding me? Is a major proof of the new birth. Are we together? That what spiritual what hunger is a major proof of what of the new birth. Is a major proof that you are born again. Huh? You see, the new birth experience must. Can you say must? Must. I can't say must. Must. The new birth experience must come with spiritual hunger. Eh? It, does, it doesn't come with spiritual growth. You don't get born again, you do it like that. No, 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 no. But it must come with spiritual hunger. Why? Because, you see, it is spiritual hunger that leads to spiritual growth. <laughs> Are you hearing me now? Yes, sir. Are you understanding me? Yes, sir. Are you understanding what I'm saying to you? Because spiritual hunger facilitates spiritual feeding. Eh? Then spiritual feeding results in what? Spiritual growth. You see, there can't be spiritual growth if there is no spiritual hunger. Are you understanding me now? There can't be what? There can't be spiritual growth if there is no what? Spiritual hunger. You see? It is only spiritual hunger that guarantees spiritual growth. Because whenever you are hungry, what do you do? I'm talking naturally now. Whenever you are hungry, what do you do? You eat. Provided that there's food. <laughs> but even if you don't eat, let's say naturally, if you don't eat for four days, but you are hungry, eventually you eat what? What will you do eventually? So you eat. So the result of hunger is feeding. Is that true now? Yes, sir. Are you hearing me? Yes, sir. What is the result of hunger? Feeding. The result of hunger is feeding. And what is the outcome of feeding? 
Tell me what's the outcome of feeding? The outcome of feeding is growth. Is that true? Yes, sir. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Amen. So the arts could be spiritual growth. Okay? But the only guarantee that we are going to have spiritual growth is that we have spiritual feeding. Is that we are feeding on spiritual stuff, spiritual substances. Are you hearing me? Yes. But the only reason why there will be spiritual feeding is because there is spiritual hunger. Huh? Now, hear me well. You cannot generate spiritual hunger by yourself. Eh? Yes, sir. Are you understanding me? Yes. You can't what? You can't generate spiritual hunger. Are you understanding me now? Yes. Hunger cannot be generated. Are you hearing me? Are you understanding what I'm saying to you? Hunger cannot be what? You know how to teach you the Bible. But we have to really understand this new death thing. What it means to be born again. Hunger cannot be generated. You cannot generate spiritual hunger. Are you understanding me? Can you decide? You can decide to, to eat, right? Yes. Let's, let's speak naturally. You can decide to eat. Can you decide to be hungry? Are you understanding me? Can you decide to be hungry? No, let's talk naturally, naturally. Naturally speak. Can you decide to be hungry? Eh? Only when you are. No, let's leave fasting. <laughs> are you understanding me? Even when you are fasting, you better say the hunger will come, you will now overcome it. Because you know you are not eating. So I'm not, I'm not talking about fasting. Eh? So you can decide to eat, right? But you can't decide to be hungry. Hunger is a natural phenomenon. Are you understanding me now? Yes, Are you understanding to you? Yes, hunger is what? Natural. Nobody decides to be hungry. That I just want to be hungry. Naturally. Are you understanding me now? In the natural. That let me just be hungry. I want to be hungry like like you know sometimes you're not eating, but you are not hungry. Yes. And you can't decide to be hungry. Yes. You know that? Yes. There are some times you're not eating, but you are not hungry, and you cannot decide to be hungry. You are hungry when you are hungry. Oh, are you hearing me? Yes, you are hungry when the law of hunger comes into play. Are you understanding me? Yes, you are hungry when the things. I'm thinking natural. I'm not even just spiritual. You are hungry when the systems. The things that God has put in place for hunger, when they are triggered, that's when you say, I'm hungry. You now go and look for food. Is that true? Yes. You now make, you see, looking for food and eating is your own decision. Are you hearing me? Yes. Oh, we must understand whether you are born again or not. Let's apply it to ourselves. Oh. Give us in case baby. <laughs> Two and three together. Are you hearing me now? Yes, sir. Feeding is your decision. It's in your power. You must make the choice to feed. You must fight to feed. You must go and look for food. Is that true? Yes, sir. But hunger is fully calm. Let's put this up line to hunger. They are born again. Hunger is what? Hunger is what? Hunger is fully calm. Hunger is original. It's natural. You see, because all that cannot be generated. Now I'm going to switch around there now. God, are you understanding? Because if God leaves us to under life, we should find under by ourselves. We will never grow. Are you understanding me? If you some of you, even you know that God, I'm coming back to the physical and the natural. Even you know that God has designed our system to go hungry when it needs to. Some of you will have died before you know. Because you can overwork, you can walk, 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 and you forget to eat, and you don't even feel hungry. Now, if on that does not do you, you will not eat. I God not know that there is a stage your body can, except you are fasting, there is supernatural strength. There is a stage your body, the, the way you are created you, the system is there. There is a, there's a length of time they must, the water, food, all of these things must be absent before they start failing. Yeah. <laughs> 
Are you not telling me? And God knows that if he leaves you, that this one is a workaholic. He will have worked for three weeks. If I don't put this in place to trigger hunger, this guy can go for three months without eating. If he has to decide to be hungry by himself. Are you hearing me now? Are you hearing me? You see? I first asked my, for my senior father that, that if you are born again, if people are born again, you have to be hungry. It's natural. You see? I didn't, I didn't, I didn't fully grasp it. But now I'm going to understand that truth from this scripture. So you see, you have a lot of people in church because those are usually people they speak in tongues. See, tongues is not is not the proof of the new death. Yes, sir. Stop lying to yourself. They are fake tongues. So you are asking me, and I'm like, oh, have you heard about those people believers who speak in tongues? He said it is fake tongues. You see, I was having the difficulty fully grasping it. One of the things we have learned over time in church is that once people can speak in tongues, we are born again. Because you ask, are you born again? Yes. With the idea of speaking in tongues. The question would be, are you born again? Yes. With the idea of spiritual hunger, are you hungry? <laughs> for God, for the things of God. Are you passionate? Tongues is not proof of the new birth. It's not the proof of it's not it's not even the Bible. It's not in the Bible the proof. It's not in the Bible. I don't know why we came up with those rubbish. Are you hearing me? So if God allows hunger to be your choice, to you see feeding is your choice. Eh? Feeding is your work. If God allows hunger to be your work, naturally now. So I will have died. You just find that you are before the throne of God. Then how did I get here? I don't say you you chose not to be hungry. <laughs> Are you understanding me? So you told us to be hungry for your body who was dying. Are you understanding to you? If God allows naturally that we can decide to be hungry or not, you see, some of you eh, you see that saying that ah no food, no food, you see. When shall pass catch you? You will decide not to be hungry for three weeks. You will decide. <laughs> you will just decide. <laughs> you know Who are you not feeling the shakwa? You say, I decide not to be hungry. <laughs> I mean, the power of hunger is in your hand. You see, many families will decide not to be hungry. Because they can't even afford food in the first place. Can I tell to you? Whether you can afford food or not, whether food is available or not, whether food is at your disposal or not, hunger will happen. Yes. Naturally. Hunger must happen. Why must hunger to go to our life? Uh, are you, are you already listening to your spiritual death? So yes, you born again? Yes. Whether you have food or not, whether you have money or not, whether there is available food or not, hunger must what? Must happen. Why? You are alive. You are a human being. There are systems that are still in place. So hunger is a major proof of life. Are you understanding me now? Now, because you are hungry, you now start looking for what to eat. So people will even steal. Ah! Hunger makes people do crazy things. Hunger. I'm going to say, let's go physical effect when I turn the light on and say, Hunger is the reason. I'm not validating anything, no. Yeah. I'm not saying anybody is right. You see, hunger is the reason that people are stealing. Hunger. <laughs> are you hearing me? Are you hearing me? People will do anything, crazy things, to start to quench hunger, to deal with hunger. They will go all night to look for food. You now say you are born again. They are begging to come to church, and you say you are born again. You are lying. You are lying. You are lying. You think about you are lying. We have to teach the Bible the way it is. We have been wrongly taught. You say you are born again, we we'll have to encourage you to come to church. Encourage you that you'll be having any delay service. Why? Because you are hungry. Are you hearing me now? Yes, we have to encourage you to be committed. And you say you are, you are born again. It's not true. You see? So because you see, death is imminent if there's no hunger. Yes. Eh? Because yes, if there's no hunger, there will be no feeling, right? If there is no feeling, there will be no growth, right? If there is no growth, decay, death is imminent. 
So all guys always follow come, even naturally. So because God has understood that our spiritual life, are you hearing me now? Eh? He knows that we can't generate hunger. Hmm? So he has ensured that this hunger will be follow come. That this spiritual hunger will come with our spiritual birth. Are you understanding me? So one of the installations of the new birth is spiritual hunger. <coughs> eh? Like when you go say, like when God was giving his life, when you're putting a seed, that ain't corruptible seed in chapter one. When God was putting it inside you, one of the things inside that seed is spiritual hunger. I don't understand him. So what is anybody saying? Anybody who is not hungry, anybody who says they are born again, but there is no hunger. The person is not born again. Don't bother yourself. Feeling is different, too. You understand? People that have been telling me they are not well fed, yes. and it's actually hunger that puts them there. Is it? But you get a point where that hunger will even push you out to go and look for the right food. Yes. So I'm not talking about the feeling yet. That there is even or that there is hunger at all. Is proof of the new birth. You see? Hunger can push people to wrong knowledge. To wrong atmospheres. They are not hungry for God. So anywhere they are not mentioning, anywhere there is God, they don't want to go there. Are you understanding me? Can I tell you to, you see? All the things like synagogue. Eh? See, Joshua. Hunger is the reason why people are there. I'm not talking about physical hunger. So people find a they they just wanted God, they were looking for God and they thought, oh, maybe God is, this is synagogue. You understand? You see? But you see, you, see, you know what, the reason why God delivers many of them from, from his faith, from faith churches? If you are a true child of God, that has you on that, and you are in a false church, God will soon bring you out. He will soon bring, bring you out. Then you do. If you are a true, a true child of God, that has you on that, and you are in a false church, or in a church where the truth is not being taught, that is not focused on Jesus, that hunger in you is what to search for where the green pasture is, where God has provided pasture. Are you understanding me? So, with the new birth, there is an installation of spiritual hunger. Can you say spiritual hunger? As newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the world. That you may grow thereby, if so be that ye have tasted that the Lord is gracious. Are you understanding me? You see, even the scripture, even that maybe cannot make you begin to understand what our senior pastor said in that meeting. I'm telling you the truth. You see, and this is doctrine. This is what? Doctrine. Because everyone, it is true in the natural. It is not true in the natural, as I've been explaining to you. This is doctrinal. This is doctrinal. Are you understanding me? Yes, you see? Are you hearing me? Hunger yes, is the reason why some people want to ascend and descend. Right? We are just touching the reason. We are touching. They are. It's hunger that puts them there. They are born again. I'm telling you the truth. You think it's easy to be going to meetings, going for meetings around? You know what I'm saying? I'm not talking of the nature of the meeting now. There are people who gather that they are going to empower prayers that they want to ascend and touch some sky, some, some throne room in heaven, and they always gather, grow up with hunger. Forget. I'm not talking about the nature of what they are doing. But the people can gather consistently. That they can gather consistently. You know they want to translocate. They are never constantly. Are you hearing me? Yes, it's hunger that pushed them there. What does that mean? They are born again. Are you understanding me? Yes, but that believer, who, that thing is the believer. Who speaks in tongues? But they have to beg. Not in our church. You don't begin to come to church here. But they have to beg to come to church. Are you understanding me? Or they don't have to encourage too much to come to church. They don't too much. They, encourage, they have to encourage you to come to church. Enco do they encourage you to eat? <laughs> Why do they encourage you to eat when you are sick? Yes. Are you understanding me? 
You see, any member who needs encouragement to come to church is sick. Is sick. Today I'm born again, but maybe he's sick. There's sickness happening. Maybe emotional, psychological, or demon is already afflicting the person. It's sickness. Whenever they say, oh, the JG is small, it's small, even if it's one spoon. Tell me, even if it's one spoon, call me a little boom. <laughs> like, even if it's one spoon, just take. So, they are going to be able to take your drugs. It's sickness that makes them encourage you to eat. Are you seeing what I'm talking about? They are encouraging you to, to come to church, come for services. They encourage you to come many. They encourage you not to meet. They encourage you to join a unit in church. They encourage you to be committed. You are not born again or you are sick. If you are not coming at all, you have to encourage you to come to church. Like if you have to encourage you to come to church, to come to church at all, you are not, you don't have passion to come. You have to encourage you are not born again. Now you are not yet born again. But you are still trying, you are coming. You are still trying, you are coming, you are coming like you are coming, you are trying. But you are still coming late. You are not yet committed. You, you are not in your devotion. You are not in units. You are not doing the work. What that, and they are trying to encourage you. Now you are sick. You are going to give all your words. You are sick. You are sick. No, I didn't put that. Don't add to my teaching. <laughs> are you hearing me now? Are you understanding me? People who have to encourage to come to church on a on a constant basis have to encourage them. They don't they don't see the hunger to come to church. No hunger, like no no hunger. <laughs> they say I'll try and come. Don't worry, I'll try and come next week Sunday. I'll try and come next week Sunday. If I can't make it this one, I'll I'll try and come. No, that they are told me. Okay, you know it's not easy. You know it's far. You know that my house is far. That far is, that far is, it's like five minutes to go. That guy doesn't go to work on the island every day. But church is far. In fact, sometimes all of them, church and their compound is next compound. But it's far, you know. Sunday we are, we go from Monday to Saturday, we are tired, we have to rest. That's only when we rest. Don't stress yourself, then is not born again. Can I just speak in tongues? I can hear you. Yes. Can I hear you? Yes. I don't know many of them speaking in tongues. No, me, I know. I know people speak in tongues. But who have no ask for God? The person is not born again. Are you understanding me? It's so big that you have tasted. That you have tasted, then you will desire. So, all that is what? Follow come. See, that is born again. No, I know that is born again. No, I know that is born again. Can you understand what that is like? She's born again. She's born again. You see, Empress and Elizabeth went for DJ. It's not disco. You know that, sir? It's like it looks like a disco girl. You know, like, like disco, that, that was what she looks like. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like those girls. You know those girls. <laughs> <laughs> are, you, are you hearing me? You see, in some of uh, I won't call them my friends, in some people hear that empress went to spend overnight in church with you. They'll be shocked. Because they know that club she liked, she liked before. <laughs> the way that you to like before. You see, but taste board has now changed. You see, the new bed changes your taste board. It changes your taste board. Eh? If you are born again and your old friends that used to work class together are still your friends, something is wrong with you. You are sick. You are sick. Something is you are sick. You are sick. No, I'm like, I cannot lie. Me, I will not lie to you. You are working. I used to work class together. I used to go to court together. I used to do everything. You used to do all those stupid, stupid TikTok video. Check, check. Those. Let me hear. Let me hear. 
When are you going to work together? Are you going to do those videos together? Eh? Are you going to go out together? Those friends. Those friends then. If they are still in your close circle now, that are born again, you are sick. You need deliverance. Like you need the real deliverance of the word of God and prayer. You now need MSN deliverance. <laughs> you need MSN deliverance. Repeat. Repeat. You know they say, every power from my father's house. Yeah. That is not my glory is in What are you waiting for? God! 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 <laughs> because you see, if God is your friend, God's friend, those words are still in your life. The enemies of your father's house are actually after you. They are after you. They are after, you. They are after your life. <laughs> the power of the brothers are after you. <laughs> are you hearing me now? So the new birth has an installation called spiritual hunger. Don't joke with it. Don't joke with it. I can't remember anybody encouraging me to come to church. The moment I met Jesus, I can't. I can't remember. I can't remember anybody encouraging me to serve the Lord. So there could be general teachings, of course, when well, in church, it has to encourage one another. There could be general, it could be, there could be people checking up on you to know how you are doing, oh, God, are you doing and all of that. Are you hearing me? But I can't remember. I sincerely can't remember. Like, this, that I went to church, or I got here because people encouraged me. I cannot remember. It, I can't remember. Because the salvation was genuine. I met the Lord. No, I remember that night. I just saw the light in my heart. I saw the Lord's glory. I saw His light, and I saw my worthlessness. I saw how sinful I was. I was in the room, a young boy in the room before I get to university. I saw the Lord's light. I don't know if it's like I just saw His light in my heart. I saw His light. And I saw how sinful I was. I saw myself before Him, and that was the day I met Him. I met Him that day, and from that day I've been following Him. I didn't need anybody to tell me to come to church. Even when I didn't understand what church was, even when I didn't understand the from church, I was more committed. The second thing people have been, the chairs said, church said they want to do prayer, they want to buy chairs. Because I, I also, again, God helped me, I got involved in a new church, the church I was newly starting. They want to buy chairs and all of that, people should give, you see. And the second thing school boy, I'll save my money. The money I give me to school, I'll be saving it. I continue to buy chairs. Are you hearing me? I will go out to our own church. Because the church is now a compound there. I will go out to clean to our own church. The young boy, I just made the Lord. Are you understanding me? Nobody taught me. Because they don't, have, they don't need to teach you. Because it is spiritual hunger. It is for you come. If you don't see it in you, you have to raise the red flag. It's red flag. This guy is not born again. He's not going to get. I'm not understanding you now. Praise God for everyone. Hallelujah. Are you hearing me? Yes, sir. You see, spiritual death eh, has to have as a token spiritual hunger. <laughs> what did you do to be hungry? What did you do to be hungry? Like I told you, you are not going to to be hungry. All that came with you. They burn you with hunger. <laughs> like an hungry man. You see, when they were making hungry man size in the room, you see they were thinking of. <laughs> but they know you are an hungry man. If you know you came to this world with hunger. Eh? How many of you are thinking hungry man size before? Don't lie, don't pretend. I know you are thinking hungry man size. You know you are thinking hungry man size. If you are looking, I didn't like doing your notes. If you are looking on green man before, raise your hand. I tell you, you are born again. If you are looking on green man, you are born again. If you are born again, you are the only saint here. People are born, please get out of the church. They are too born again for me. I don't like them. How can you be looking on green man in this church? How can you be a member of this church? You are not looking on green man before. Ah! You are not looking on green man They are not qualified for this kind of church. <laughs> How can you be in this church? I have heard one grimmer. If I marry you, don't you enter my place? How oh, am I sure you wonder for the things of God? 
Bin tu ni mau buang di mana? Ibu ada sini. Di sini ada apa tu? Ya, nak cakap ibu yang dah beri. Ibu dah nak cakap. Amen. Bin tu beri kamu. Don't you just love church? Don't you love God's presence? You see, there is no no drama. I love when they are in the presence of God. No drama. No drama. It is the presence of God. It is His church. It is His people. I said, that is what is God and His people. Is God and His people? Is not the beauty? Is not the sound? Is not? Is not? A lot of these things want to make us comfortable, but we cannot build our faith on them. So spiritual hunger is follow come. Are you understanding me? Now there are things that can encourage your hunger. Spiritual hunger. Are you hearing me? Yes, and there are things that can put out the hunger. Are you understanding know to you? There are things that can what? I'm telling you, there are things that can encourage your hunger. Spiritually. So find the right people, the right friends, the right atmosphere to encourage your hunger. If you stay around the wrong atmosphere, your hunger will go out. Are you understanding me? So there are things that can facilitate your hunger. You know that physically, naturally. We are not hungry before. But there is a smell you can hear. There is an aroma you can perceive. Is that true? You are not, you are not hungry before. Can you get? In fact, you just finished eating some few hours ago, some minutes ago. You understand? But uh, you don't perceive an hour, man. But the kind of food you perceive. Where does that? And you get hungry. How many of you have been friends before? <laughs> Why are you out there, let's see? Alex, we don't know if you have any of this. So you are killed that. You are killed that of the brethren. So do you know what I'm going to say to you? So if you're not aware, there are things that can true down that. I know that, but that, those are occasion based. But hunger is natural. Hunger can be triggered because hunger is dear. Are you understanding me now? Are you hearing me? No matter the truth, no matter what, hey, hear me now. You see, put a dead man here. Let another pass beside him. Let, oh, in Kwabi, let everything, sagras, ice cream, is the other pass. Will you be hungry? Are you understanding me? Will you trigger any hunger? Why won't you trigger hunger? It's dead. For him, the principle of hunger is no longer at work. Are you understanding me now? So, there are things that can trigger your hunger spiritually. But it's only happen because you are born again when there's true hunger inside you. Are you hearing me now? Praise God forevermore. So if you are born again, again, like again, if you are born again. Yeah. One of the things that good atheists will do to you is that you trigger hunger in you. Yes, are you understanding me? Yes, sir. Hunger will be triggered by the people by your association because you are already hungry. So again, associate with people, places, atmospheres, things that will trigger hunger in you. That will trigger the hunger you already have. Are you hearing me now? Yes, sir. Praise God. Hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, you see, you need hunger to follow Jesus. You need what? Hunger to follow Jesus. Because blessed are they that, that what? That hunger and thirst. For they shall be filled. There is no feeling without hunger. You can't become like Jesus without hunger. Blessed is not merciful now. Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness. For what? They shall be filled. Feeling is the product of hunger. Oh, I feel like I wish I'd be like Jesus. Are you hungry to be like Jesus? I just wish I also can be okay. You see, wish is not the same as hunger. Eh? When there's hunger, hunger generates seeking. It generates looking for food. Which food thinking you are just wishing? Oh, I wish that one day I can pay in tongues for three hours. 
I just wish I wish I can be speaker. I just wish I can. Even the people have a lot of wishes. I wish I can't be going to church consistently. You are sure that? <laughs> you know that the poor people who have wishes that they will have the airplane. But they are lazy. They are not working out to be successful. But they have a lot of wishes. Wishes and hunger are not the same thing. Are you understanding me? Hunger, hunger pushes you to take deliberate steps. Deliberate steps. Are you understanding me? Yes, sir. Hunger be like, hey, wife, please, be waking me. Every Sunday, be waking me. Be calling me by 5 o'clock. Please, because I sleep off too much. So that call me by 5 o'clock. So that I can get up to go on my back. By 6, please, call me back to confirm if I'm ready for church. Are you understanding me? By 7, please, call me again. To find out if I'm ready on the way. On that thing, the way they say If you need to commit a lot of people to undo you, on that will do it. On that is not wishful thinking. On that says, Alex, please wake me every five o'clock so I can do my devotion. Are you understanding me now? Praise God. On that goes back to the channel to listen to the messages. I call you when you are not in church. On that goes back. On that says, oh, Elizabeth, where is your notes? What, what, what did I miss in church last week? Or what did I miss before? What did I pass over before I came in? Are you hearing me now? Yes, sir. Hunger is genuine. Hunger asks. Hunger has tokens. Hunger has tokens. Hunger is not wishful thinking. And hunger is a gift of the new birth. Hunger is natural to the man who is born again. Are you understanding me? Hunger is what? Natural. It's natural to the man who is born again. It's natural. So actually many people in church are not born again. Because they come once in a while, they come something. And that was in a while after they've been persuaded. They are not born in a given you see? So it's not forcing them to come to church. We should be looking for how to how they'll be saved. I'm telling you the truth. We are going to keep us here that they keep coming. Perhaps one day they will encounter salvation. You understand? Know because then, you see, the need for people who are not born again is not to come to church, it's to meet the Lord. So you're angry, some that are not going to church, are not going to People that are not saved, they're angry that are not going to church. Because they speak in tongues. And she, and, and she speaks in tongues too, and she's always going to church regularly. I don't see her. We need salvation, she's not saved. Praise the Lord forevermore. Hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. So there has to be genuine hunger and thirst, right? There has to be genuine hunger. If there's real, if they're really born again. Not really if they're born again. Are we together now? Yes, so if we are not passionate at all about the things of God, then to ask you to come to church, to encourage you and all of that, you are doing green. Are you understanding me? You are going, you are being tossed to and feel you. Today you are there, tomorrow you are not there, today you are there, tomorrow you are not there. You are fluctuating one day on, three weeks off, like all kind of stuff. They will still pass you, you are not going again. But if you come, if you are still coming, but they are still encouraging you to be committed. They are going to come early. They are going to miss services. They are going to join units to be part of the work. What does it wrong with you? You are sick. You are sick. So that could be as well before you go to death. <laughs> because sick people, if they are not here, they eventually will die. Don't you feel it's natural to be part of the church and to be part of the work? Don't think that's the natural thing. Don't think that's the normal thing. That you're in the church and you're fully committed. You're in the workforce. You come early. You are saying, what, are, what do we need to get done? You're always available. Don't think that's the normal thing. Oh, you think the other one is the normal, the one that the fake church has taught us? It's not normal. Are you hearing me now? Yes, sir. So, hunger is proof 
of the neighbor. It's proof. Are we together now? Yes. Let's keep reading. First, I'm going to show you something today. I thought this is just the two parts, but it's not two parts. <laughs> Maybe three or four parts of this a chosen generation. But let us. No, it's not, it's not the normal long series. Three or four parts we are done. Believe me now. I know if anybody believes me, I know anybody believes me. You believe me, right? Uh, I know that person believes me, that believe me. Uh, person believes me. See, I told you something like that. Ah, Pastor, you know I believe you now. Tell me, believe me. Tell me, is that true? I got it. I got it. Very good, If you ever tell me, believe me, I'll doubt it. I will doubt it. I will doubt it. You know, I don't believe me. Amen. Amen. So look at verse 4. NLT. NLT. So I just pick something from here and we'll close for today. Don't pick it up next week, but I don't close. So it says, You are coming to Christ. I mentioned it the last the first time. Now where are we coming to? Christ. Where are we coming to? Christ. That that is the ultimate plan of God for our lives. To become like Jesus. <laughs> See this one. Yeah, it's stretching. The guy woke up around past eight. Oh. <laughs> let, me, let me say two things about this guy. Whether he's born again. <laughs> one. Oh, uh, maybe he's sick. Maybe he needs healing. <laughs> hey, now, which one, which one is the problem? Is it that you're not born again? You, you are sick. <laughs> yeah, which one? No, no, no. Let me know that by itself. You are born again. Yes. So, what is it? You need healing. You need healing, you need healing. You are sick. There is some sickness. Yes. <laughs> 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 what is it? What is it? You need to be uniquely. You need to be genuinely born again. Oh, you are uniquely. Your own born again is different. <laughs> 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 So that is born again. Yes. That means the only problem is that he's sick. Yes. <laughs> he's getting better. Okay, I hope I've made ministry. So we'll be fine soon, Abi. That is a very good thing. You'll be discharged from the hospital. Yeah. You know, Doctor said he's responding to treatment. Yeah. I have to believe the doctor. Okay. If you have very soon, he'll be discharged. Yes. He'll not live like a normal human being. Yeah. I don't have to live over the normal human being. Am I even going to be a doctor? Yes, sir. I don't have to live over the Amen. Brother, I believe in you. I believe in you. Yeah, I believe in you. You are coming to Christ. Huh? Yeah. So you are coming to Christ. So that is the destination, right? For every believer. We are coming to Christ. Are we together now? Yes, Can I say I am coming to Christ? Coming to Christ. Is this not a glorious destiny? It is. Is it not to live for? It is. Is it not going to die for? It is. Like is it not worth dying for? Like the trophy you want to receive is Christ is that you come into Christ. That that's the trophy ahead of you. To become all that Christ is. You are coming to Christ. Are you hearing me now? Yes, sir. Who is the living cornerstone of God's temple? Can I do that in KJV? As unto a living stone. Are we together now? Yes, sir. So you're coming as unto a living stone. A stone that is alive. It's not like every kind of stone. When there are different kinds of stones, stones are generally not alive. But it says this particular stone is a living stone. It's a stone that is alive. It's a stone that has life. Are you understanding me? Yes. Now, stones there speaks of men. Are you understanding me? Yes, sir. Praise God for Speaks of what? Yeah. Speaks of men. 
Glory to God forevermore. Hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. You are coming to a living stone, a stone of the life, a man of the life, a living stone. You see, and it's using stone because the plan of God is to build men into his temple, into his house. You see that next week by God's grace. Are you understanding me? And stone is the object for construction. For the construction. Now, it's been using stone, it didn't use cement and brick, brick and what do you use today? Blocks. Those nine inches and all of that. Because in those days they used stone to build, they just said stones. So that's the language. So he's speaking in terms of architecture, in terms of building. Because eventually what God is interested in is a building. Can you say I'm a building? A building. You see, you are not a girl who wears Brazilian air. Are you understanding me? You are not a girl with a pointed nose. <laughs> you are <staying> here. <laughs> are you hearing me? Yes, sir. What do you call that brown color? That, that brown skin color? Yeah. Yeah. No, it's not. Eh? Yeah. I don't know. There's another word. It escaped my mind. Chocolate, is it chocolate? It's not chocolate. There's a word they used to use. The one somebody used. Yeah. <laughs> Look, there's another word. What kind of just came out yesterday? <laughs> there's another word, actually. Glowing. It's not glowing. Glowing. Okay. Blonde. Oh, it's blonde. Yeah. Oh, it's blonde. Oh, it's blonde. Yeah. No, blonde is not a fool. Yeah. Okay, that's blonde. It doesn't have blonde hair. Blonde hair, right? Eh? See, you're not a girl with blonde hair. You need to have a blonde hair. I am not caramel. You are not caramel. <laughs> you are not melanin pumping. <laughs> are you understanding me? Are you understanding to you? Yes, sir. Eh? Yes, sir. You're not a girl on straight bone. I'll be going straight then. I hear that thing. Yes, sir. I hear that thing to you. Yes, sir. I hear that thing to you. Yes, sir. You're not a guy with six parts. What are your definition? Yes, you are. You are. Are you hearing me now? Yes. You are God's temple. Yes, sir. Yes. And is there anybody? Yes, what for instance? You are what? You are God, I'm telling you why you want stone. You are a house, you are an entire house. You did it. You are the temple of God. First of all, there are three. Is it verse 16? Is there first of all? Yeah, I think it's in verse 16 also. Are you hearing me now? No, 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 no. No, this is you you are the temple of God in this scripture. I don't want this one. What's the verse 16? Ah uh ah. -uh. I already called the verse for you. I don't know that thing. No, you know that we are the temple of God. And that the Spirit of God dwelleth in you. No, you know that what? We are the temple. You are a house. You are God's house. You are not a fine girl. What are you? God's house. You are not a fine boy. You are God's temple. Because those things are deceptive. So you think you are a fine girl. So you need to carry yourself like a fine girl and use your life the way you want it, the way fine girls would behave. You need to behave the way fine girls behave. No, 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 no. You behave the way God's temple behave. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Are you hearing me? Yes, sir. Are, are you understand what I'm saying to you? Your life is not ordinary. Your life is not normal. It's not natural. You are a building. You are God's house. You are God's temple. Imagine, imagine, see this house now. Mind this house that the greatest thing is wants is air. Is Brazilian air. A big house. A house. Every day that can just have Brazilian air. You know that, sir? A house that has gold, that has have everything inside you. It's not crying for eyelashes. <laughs> like if I can just have your ring. Imagine the house, the palace of the king. 
of a billionaire king. Because God is worthy. Of a great king. Now cry louder. Hey, I wish, I wish, I wish I had gone straight. I'll, I'll be better if I had gone I'll be finer if I had gone straight. You know, people are not like that too. Because you are in a house. Imagine the house of a king crying. That if I can just fix my nose, I'll be better. I'll have more satisfaction. If I can use another 15 pro, I'll, I'll be better. Imagine a house filled with great things. Are you understanding me? Please don't misuse your life. Don't abuse this your life. Don't abuse your life now. Don't stop abusing your life. Stop it. Stop it. You're a house. Hey, I'm a house. I'm a house. I'm a house. I'm a, I am ghost house. I am ghost house. Oh, house. Oh, and if you are ghost house, can ghost house be ugly? No. Imagine how much God will have because it is us. To be going to be so beautiful. Oh, I'm going to see this later in this teaching. Oh, you are so beautiful. I'm telling you. I'm going to manifest naturally. Yes. I'm telling you the truth. Go to Jesus. So go back. So you, I, I came here because he says, come to, I want to show you why I choose stone. Because he's talking about temple. And you can see it in verse 5. He said, you are also, show me, I'll come back here. He also has lively stones are built up a spiritual house. You don't have time for this. I don't know what I'm going to do. So he's using the word stone. Go back to that spot. He's using stone because he's talking about a house. He's talking about construction. He's talking about building. Are you with me now? Yes, sir. You are coming into Christ that that is your destiny. Oh, are you hearing me now? That the plan of God for you is to become like Jesus. That's why I started with hunger. You heard what I told you? This becoming like Jesus cannot happen without hunger. He said, if you stay to me, I told you, you have to cry out so that you can come here. You can come to a full event of salvation. Because you see, the full event of salvation is to become like Jesus. You are coming to Christ with the living cornerstone of God's temple and heart. Look at what I will show you today, actually. He was rejected by people. But he was chosen by God for great honor. Are you ready this morning? Is there still time? There's time. This is the reason I want to show you today. He was what? Rejected by people. Thank you, electrocutionist. <laughs> he was rejected. <laughs> he was rejected by people. I think that will make my preaching better. <laughs> if I, my preaching can go to Canada now. <laughs> he was rejected. He was rejected. <laughs> Don't spend my anointing. <laughs> when I get to Oklahoma, I'll speak like that. I'm in Nigeria presently. I guess, as you see, you see, Jesus was rejected for your sakes. So you have no choice, but you gotta live for him. You live for Jesus. You think you think I got things like that? I'm not talking, screaming, Jesus, I'll thank you. You find out you're not crying. Even when your heart is too hard. <laughs> <laughs> See all my pieces is fire, you don't cry, you don't shout, you don't scream. <laughs> I have I have a little bit to Canada. But I don't do smoke preaching. You see, it got for you to save you so you can talk you know you can tell me save you. <laughs> you see when you see when you know the father, you can you'll be able to go farther. <laughs> No one can put you down. No one can put you down. I'm telling you, no one can put you down in this life. Because Jesus belongs to you. Don't be you. Before you make any of us things, don't last. But if you put your problem is too much. You are going to a lot. You are going to a lot. Before you make any of us things, God left you alone. Even when pastor is sweating, look at you, look at what? May God deliver you. I think you are very good at telling your pastor. Ah, where are you going? Where are you going? Where are you going? Amen. You see, 
It was rejected by people. But it was chosen by God for greater. You see, I need to talk, I need to talk to you this morning. You see, some of you misalign your life because of people's rejection. Some of you begin to walk out of God's plan because people have rejected you. So what we're talking about was a chosen generation. Can you say, I am chosen? Because you see, you need to be careful not to be misaligned with the will of God because people don't like you. Are you hearing me now? Yes, sir. Praise God. Yes. You see, a lot of people have sacrificed destiny on the platter of people don't like me because they want people to like them. You are a chosen generation. Oh my God. But he was rejected by people. But he was chosen by God for great honor. Now give me a case of you now. Oh, thank you, Jesus. This allowed indeed of men. Praise God. This allowed means what? Rejected. This allowed of men, he was indeed rejected. This allowed of men, but what? The chosen of God and what? Precious. And precious. Oh my God. Come back to NLT. We'll come back to the area. He was rejected by who? By people. But he was chosen by God for what? You see, can I talk to you brothers and sisters? God and people don't think alike. Are you hearing me now? God and people don't think what? They don't think alike. They don't think the same way. God and people don't have the same values. They don't have the same values. God and people don't have the same preference. Are you hearing me now? Yes, you see, I'm not sure you want to know what happened to you whenever God has chosen you. Because you are God's choice. Are you understanding? If you, you see, some of you interpret your life in the ways of people's behavior towards you. Like, you need to be able to, to interpret the value of your life. To interpret what your life means. And if, if people don't like me, if people reject me, maybe I don't have value. Oh, you're kidding me. Are you understanding me? So a lot of you, you interpret your life. Even when you are presently, God's plan for you, you interpret it with the lens of man's opinion about you. You see, if you don't fulfill destiny, you have to be free from man's opinion. Are you hearing me now? Yes, sir. What did I say? You want to be destiny, you have to be free from man's opinion. Man's opinion. If you are going to fulfill destiny, you have to be free from man's opinion. Are you understanding me? Yes, sir. What is man's opinion? Man's opinion. What it thinks. Man's opinion is what it is. Even the man giving the opinion about you, his own opinion about himself is not correct. <laughs> you know what I said? The man giving the opinion about you, his own opinion about himself is not correct. Are you understanding me? Because you see, when it comes to man, are you hearing me? No opinion is correct apart from the validation that God gives. Are you understanding me? Yes, sir. Whether I'm born again or not born again, whatever man thinks about himself is not accurate. Are you hearing me? Because man is only a product. He has a producer. Are you hearing me? Yes, sir. Are you understanding what I'm trying to say to you? It is the opinion of the producer that counts. You see, man's opinion about man is inaccurate. That is why we must always be in the brain of God to, to understand his opinion about us, where we stand. Oh, there's a church in chapter 3 of Revelation. It says you have a reputation, that's in NLT. Revelation chapter 3. It says you have a reputation for being alive, but you are dead. Are you understanding me? Are you hearing me? Give me that scripture. Revelation chapter 3, I can't remember the verse. 
when you are alive, they are dead. And because you have a reputation for being alive, but you are dead. It's one of the churches. It's in the early part. That's what? That's one. Uh -huh. I know it's not far. I don't want to say that one, but I think. Okay, let's from that one. Why to the letter of the end of the church in service? This is only from the one who has seven full spirit of God and the seven. Uh -uh. People have no issues. This today should not be your call. Find out what. Why is it breaking? Do, uh, is that what the, you know what? It has been happening. You hear me? It has been happening. You should have solved it. It should not happen again. So if it's been then look for what. Look for another thing. You can't keep having the same. I mean, we don't know what we are doing. It's a recurring problem. Now. It's not that it just happened today. So I don't want it again. Please. Work with them. I don't want to see this again. That they have me from moon age. I don't want it. Amen. Amen. What does Spirit of God and the seven? This must not this must be the last time this happens in this church. Because this is not the first time, it's not the same, it's not the tenth time. It doesn't make sense. How many people don't know what you are doing? Why is that the way of church in service? This is a message from the one who has the seven spirit of God and the seven stars. I know all the things you do. And that you what? You have a reputation for being alive. You know what? But you are dead. You have what? For so what? What is what your reputation? What people think about you? Are you understanding me? This is it. You will understand now. You have a reputation for being alive, but you are dead. Now, reputation comes from what people can actually see. That means if God did not come to bring true judgment, what will they say about the people that they are alive? Are you understanding me? Forget the second part. Reputation is what people can see. What people can obviously see. Are you hearing me? That is a body church. What people can obviously see is that what? They are alive. Oh, are you hearing me? Are you understanding me? What can people obviously say about this church? They are alive. Reputation is what people can obviously see about you. The opinion people form about you based on what they can obviously see. So that means if God did not come to judge, these people will be right. Because what you can see is that these people are what? Alive. But God now came in to bring his own perspective. Now you see, uh, all of you have lied. <laughs> people think you are alive. Even you, you think you are alive. You say, God, you are dead. Are you understanding me? So why do you love man's opinion so much? You see, man's opinion is useless. Man's opinion is what? Useless. Because I can't believe comes in with his, his opinion. He said that man was wrong. You have the reputation of being alive, but you are dead. So a lot of you live your life based on people's reputation. Based on reputation, based on people's opinion. That if people's opinion go contrary, you think you are out of alignment. Go back to Peter. He was rejected by people, but he was chosen by God for great honor. You see, whenever you are chosen by God, one of things you suffer is rejection. Are you hearing me? Whenever what? Whenever God chooses you, one of the things you suffer is rejection. People will reject you. People don't want to associate with you. People who don't like you. People, people, you will suffer rejection in different ways. Are you understanding me? So the chosen man must prepare to suffer rejection. A lot of us don't get prepared for this. That is why we leave that place where they are chosen us. 
we step into man's will. We leave God's plan for our life and step into man's, man's purpose. Are you understanding me? If one of us leaves the path of God, because if any time you are on the path of God, you will suffer rejection. Are you understanding me? So because you can't, you can't be think that what man says is what God is saying. So when we are on God's path, and man begins to reject us, they think that maybe we are on the wrong path. Are you getting it? So you want to come back to go to the place where they will applaud you. The last, when they are applauding you, God is weeping because you have left his path. Are you hearing me now? Yes, sir. So when you see, whenever people reject, whenever you find rejection, it is not proof. It is not a proof that you are worthless. It is not a proof that you have done anything wrong. It's not a proof that there's nothing about your life. A lot of the times, it is because God has chosen you. Hey, can I say this way? Can I say this way? People always reject what God has chosen. Because people are carnal. They are evil. Are you understanding me? People always what? People always reject what God has chosen. You see, sometimes, even people who are spiritual, sometimes they are blinded. Someone was blinded. Don't go to that scripture. He was blinded. He looked at him and he said, Show me the Lord's anointing is before him. You see, David was rejected by his family, but it was God's choice. His own father rejected him. Are you hearing me? He said, Bring out your sons. He brought out all of them, all his seven sons. He didn't think of David <laughs> because he had rejected David. In, in, in the sense that he never dreamt, he never thought that David, David can be the king. We are talking of anointing a king from the house of Jesse. We are talking of David. How can he, he can't be David now? So David was never in the picture. His own family did not think, they didn't wish him well. They didn't think he would be the anointed king. Are you understanding me? So he had made all the seven sons pass before Samuel. It's as if they were ending that process. Samuel had to ask. Are these all your songs? It's like they were done, and they were ever going. It's like God told me. It's like someone like you know they will say maybe it's not this family God sent you to. Ever you going back to there? You know was going back to normal. Like they were done. Like this. Like some of these are all my songs. So like without talking. Like the answer is like all my songs have come out. Uh, maybe you didn't hear. Maybe maybe it's the house of the road they sent you to. Someone now had to ask. Maybe God just spoke to him, asking that question. Yes, yeah, sir. He had to ask, are these all your sons? You see, if, if it's not that David's family has written him off, eh? And they were looking at the world, but they said, go and call David. Oh, that David is there. Because they didn't, they didn't wish him, they have written him off. They know that very part. They didn't think about him. He now said, are these all your sons? You see, you hear the response. He said, there is, there is one, the last one. is out there in the field, tending the flock. <laughs> Are you understanding me? But David was chosen by God. David was God's choice. You see, whenever God has chosen you, men have to, men have to reject you. <laughs> Are you understanding me? Sir. Men have to what? Reject. Hey! If men are not rejected, if you are not rejection from men, if all you are getting from men is embrace, they want to embrace, you are better check. Are you still in alignment with the will of God? If men are always a hey, good girl, good girl, good, good, good. If you don't say, say what to you if men say to you, good, 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 that you are always good, that you are good. If that's what people are saying, he said, wait to you. Have an ask you for He said, wait to you. Wait to you. Do you know why it's wait? Because the natural thing for men to say, to do to a man, that is in sync with God, that is in line with the will of God, the natural thing for men to do is to reject him. Is to speak evil of him. So when they are now embracing you, when they are now saying good, 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 good about you, men, you don't like God and his will, and they are saying good, good, that you are good, he said, what you? What is that you? It means that you are not in sync. You are in trouble because you are not in sync with God. See, I, I need to prepare your heart. Uh, you see? Go unto you where all men shall speak well of you. This is the way I speak in. Are you understanding? 
For so did their father to what? To the first of Israel. Whenever all men speak of you, you are false. You are false. You are not in the will of God. So that God chose you. You are not like you have left that part of your choice of your choosing. When you choose, you have left it. You are falling in order. You see, men will never speak well of what is true, of the truth of what is from God. Men will only speak well of what is false, because man's act is false. Man is false. Let all men be a liar and God what? And God be true. So I'm preparing you because the people I see here are going to walk in the will of God. The people I'm seeing here are coming to Christ. Go back to our scripture. The people I'm seeing here are embracing the will of God. The people I'm seeing here are chosen for great honor. So I'm preparing you for rejection. Because that is, that is the point where many, many people back out. The point where rejection sets in. You know, some people God said their parents rejected them. Their family rejected them. So people have to follow you they got rejected. And I wonder, ah, is this what this thing comes with? Well, then I'll go back. But you're not prepared for it. See, we, we, we know that happen in many things, in many ways. We can be misaligned societal in the society. Eh? Or it seems that maligned. There can be a malignment, a social malignment. It can be maligned. Just set you in one side. They do anything that is good, they don't want to offer it to you. They speak evil of you. Are you understanding me now? So you see, whenever God has chosen you, man will always reject you. You will suffer rejection. People will not like you. See, so you see, if there is somebody able to support you and what you are doing, because in the will of God you are lying, you have made a mistake. Are we together? Now? So some, some, some of us sometimes we are doing the will of God, we are doing the part of God, the part that is to us, and people don't support us. They are now wondering, did God really tell me to do this? You don't need really the will of God, you now want to drop it. Because people are not supporting. Are you with me now? Are you with me now, brothers and sisters? Brothers and sisters, I'm preparing you. Because you have to suffer rejection if God has chosen you. People will reject you. You see, hey, are you with me now? now? Can you hear me now? When you are expressing this rejection from men, it's because God has chosen you for great honor. Eh? Tell us what? Chosen you. Tell me, can I leave me Jesus today, sir? Let me see the time. I don't like crushing this kind of stuff. Because there's a scripture I want to. I want you to understand this thing very well. So you don't stress your life. I think I just made a foundation for you today, for this rejection today. I'll finish this rejection next week. You see, a lot of believers are not prepared for life. You know, many believers are not prepared for life. That's why they get to places and they start messing up. They are not prepared. They are not prepared to face the world. They just come to church, they just go to church, they are not prepared. So when they get to that work, they are going to place them. To, to, instead of that, to be a shining light. When they are very shining light and people start rejecting them, they also want to fit in. Because they are not prepared. Not, many believers are not prepared for life. They are not prepared. They, they, they get there and start stealing. They say it's not stealing, it's wisdom. Because their bosses are trying to push them to do it. Their colleagues are saying, why are you doing like SU? Why are you doing like you? Uh, uh, is it only you? This is I'm a very strong secretary in my church. Many people will say that. People will steal you and they say, is it only you? Your own is too much. Is it only like a Christian? I'm the choir court uh, of my church. What about that? Even my pastor tells me to be wise uh, at work. Because it's wisdom. It's our uh, understand. What is wrong with you? You see, they now start co considering all of those conversations. Their heart now starts shifting. Because man is rejecting them. You see, you know how to talk to you like this. You know how to talk to you like this. You are going to great places. I'm telling you the truth. That's why you anyway. They reject you. But why are they rejecting you? Because God has told me great honor. I'm speaking to you. I have to prepare you for where you are going. Whenever God has chosen you, whenever God has put his hand upon you, are you hearing me now? Yes, oh, I see the anointing. Are you hearing me now, sister? Are you understanding me? Yes, when 
when God chooses you, we are coming for no other thing but for what? Great honor. Hey! For what? Oh my God! So a lot of people are rejecting. The thing that people are rejecting is a man that is destined. The future is what? Great honor. So, would you let go of great honor for the applause of men? Would you let go of great honor that God has chosen you for? For the embrace of men, for the likes of men. You are better know what you are doing. I said you are chosen for great honor. Hey, and by the time God will honor you, that is done. Oh my God. I said God is going to honor you. Amen. I said God is going to honor you. Amen. I said God wants to honor you. Amen. I said God wants to honor you. Amen. I said God is going to honor you. Amen. That is the reason for the rejection. And more rejections are coming because He has not even honored you yet. Are you understanding me? Yes, sir. What has He done for you that they are ready, that they are they hate you already? That will now happen when the big deal comes. That will be prepared. Though. Like what, what? What has He given you? Out of what He wants to give you, what has He given you? And they are already angry. But you are already trying to please them. You say, it's not really like that. I'm not really a Jesus girl like that. I'm just, I'm just, you are already, you are already explaining. You are explaining. You are already explaining. But as I said, you are not even one percent of what God wants to give you. People are angry and you are explaining to them. Why are you explaining? Then go verse, 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 then go tired. Are you hearing me? Yes, sir. Then go what? Then go verse, 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 then go tire. Look at the now go and hold transformer. <laughs> I'm telling you the truth. Then go verse, 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 then go tire. Eh? Look at two things. Look at two things that happen. And then you now come and hold me, or the now go and hold transformer. I'm telling you the truth. You now come and hold me. You now say, I've always believed in you. <laughs> I've always thought that you'd be a great guy. I, I saw it. In fact, that's why I supported it the way I did. <laughs> they were rejecting you. Man can change their mind. Man is volatile. Man is unstable. Is it not the opinion of man that you want to use to live your life? Don't step out of your great honor because of man's opinion. And I said the way it is in this scripture. Don't step out of the great honor God has for you because of man's rejection. Don't, don't try it. Don't try it. I, I need to put you more on this board, you see. Um, <laughs> time has, time has gone. You know, time has gone lead on for me. But our church is structured. <laughs> we don't follow the leading of the spirit. But we also have sense, right? Hmm? There's, another, there's another meeting after this. That we always have everything. So we have to plan everything. Amen. Amen. But our church, right? Yes. We can pause it and press play next week now. No answer me now. Yes. It, it, even our preaching. We want to end it professionally. We can press pause, Abina. I'll now continue playing where we stop next week. Yes. So we are going to press pause, right? Yes. I understand that I'm beginning, I'm beginning to speak to God. I'm beginning to speak to God. Thank God for your life. You are chosen for great honor. You are chosen. People may be thankful you are chosen. Thank God for your life. Oh, thank God for your life. Thank God for your life. Thank God for your life. I'm chosen for great honor. People may think that I'm chosen for great honor. Thank God for your life. Thank God for your life. 